All right, go get some, but it's a medical person. They can tell you this is what this is. This is a tendon enthesis, this round ball at the bottom. And then there's a bloody part that goes around it that keeps it from destroying the bone. Coming off of that is a stalk that's broken here, and they break it in abrupt transmission. And these are the blood vessels, the same as the blood vessels in this one. It broke off at the same transition point. It rises up here like, like bands, and it does on this one as well. You see the little things here, you see the little things here, you see the little things here, you see the little things here. That, it, they are identical. This is a mud fossil I have here in my shop, and I have it right here. It's, it's easily seen. See these rise up here? So I got the same thing coming on these. Now, this is a, a tendon at this point, and that is, in the background, is Comet 67P. I'll show you a little different shot. All right, there's the structure right there. That's the structure of Comet 67P, and that's the end. This is they they run up the tendrils, run up here, and they run to what a place called an abrupt transition. And I can show you that in my stuff, and it snaps right at that one point. And I'll show you my a mud fossil here that is exactly the same. We talked about an abrupt transition. There it is, right there. That's where the tendon fibrils come up, and they meet up with that. This stuff right here, which is a gooey matrix, and that gooey matrix glues these straps together with the meat, which is the fiber that goes out, which is your 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 uh, flesh. And here it comes. I'm going to pan over to that. Now there's two little pointers going on here, but that's because I overlaid one on the other. But the, you see that that's the gooey part. Now we're going into the flesh. That's literally flesh of a creature. It's petrified now. And you see there's a, a transition here. And now we go into the, so we had one transition, there's another transition. Now we go into the fibers of the um, actual flesh. And you see the white flakes in there? Well, those white flakes are uh, minerals that continue to be the fibrous stuff. Now, we're, now you see this? These little holes here, those little holes are the the blood that services it. You see this here? That is another abrupt transition. That transition is between the 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 toughness of the of the fibers down here, and it breaks right here. And then there's another one right out here that breaks and has broken, and that leaves these little cylindrical places. You see that? It's it's as clear as it could be. But and these are mud fossils. And then we go into Comet 67P. These are those same sort of little vascular holes I showed you that let in the blood. And here's some more. The, uh, Rosetta finds carbon molecules in comet dust. This is from the 8th of September 2016. The Rosetta Science team has announced that they have detected very complex carbon molecules in the solid dust. Our analysis reveals carbon in a far more complex form than expected. Obvious. Always, oh, totally unexpected. That's the two biggest words in science. Remark so and so. Uh, okay. It is so complex we can't give it a proper formula or name. It's life. <laughs> It's the complex of life. Listen to this. Then they go on and they say, the organic signature of seven particles are present in the paper. They, they talk about the particles. The particles are identical to what's in the human body, after, or, or in any creature, really, after you sublimate off the real volatile organics. Now, now they go on and they say, the carbon is found to be mixed with other previously reported on sodium, magnesium, aluminum, silicon, carbon, iron. That's because the other things sublimated off, the less less dense molecules, uh, uh, elements, get liberated out of there in a process called sublimation. And then what's left over is that. This is exactly identical to what's in the human body. This is just unbelievable. And I've been telling them, trying to get to them to tell them this for, since they, they, they took pictures of this thing, I knew what it was. Anyway, then they go on, <laughs> listen to this, and I told them that, 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 that uh, meteorites too. They're all from body parts of creatures. It's, it's just unbelievable. I know it's crazy, but it's true. Then they say, um, after they say, talk about the magnesium and all this stuff being found, it is bound in very large macromolecular compounds similar, <laughs> listen to this, to the insoluble organic matter found in carbonaceous chondrite meteorites that fall to earth because they're pieces of meat. <laughs> 
But with a me major difference, there's much more hydrogen found in the comet samples than in meteorites. Obviously, because when they come through the heat of re-entry, they burn off the hydrogen. Yikes. And what happens is the lungs turn into iron because they are full of blood, which is ferrous oxide iron, and it smelts. And it leaves the actual veins and arteries inside that you can see them. I, I have all this in my video, every bit of this. There's nothing here that's, that's new. <laughs> No, but anyway, it goes on. But as this kind of meteorite is associated with reasonably well-processed parents' bodies, they think they know what they're talking about. They have no clue. Everything that is in the universe is from life. Some of it is now alive. Some of it is now dead. Some of it will reanimate and become alive, and some of it will die and become dead. That is the cycle, and there is nothing that I have found that, that is different. Mars is, is literally 100% from living creature, dead now, has no magnetic field. The only body that I know of in the solar system has no magnetic field. Uh, even our moon has a magnetic field. Um, Earth is alive 100%, absolutely no question. It digests hydrocarbons, it eats them, and it squirts back up the minerals left over as basaltic, uh, volcanic basalts. They deteriorate, they get eaten by the creatures that are animated by the sunshine. And the sunshine is nothing more than energy that's spit out to do things in, in, in the universe. And the entire universe is covered with this energy. And, and I mean, it's loaded with the energy. It's almost like a fluid in the, in the universe. And it is dark energy and dark matter. When it leaves our sun, it's leaving there as a particle we know that. It hits things, it moves them, uh, solar sails and, and all that business. We, we know it's energy when it leaves, and, and when it gets here, it lights up solar panels and does all the things. We know it's energy when it gets here. So in between it, we know it's energy and matter, so it's dark energy, you just can't see it, and that's because it has no cloud around a nucleus to bounce off of. Light is nothing more than a spinning particle and the length of the spin, or the frequency of the spin, determines the wave pattern that Einstein looked for. It's the, the faster it spins, the shorter the wave. It's still a particle. You look at it from the side, it's a wave. It spins slow, it's a long wave. It spins fast, it's a short wave. It spins fast, it's got more energy. It spins slow, it's got less energy. And that is the mass. That's all it is. When it hits something, it bounces off of the cloud of electrons, because this is an electron, it bounces off the cloud of electrons, it creates vibration and heat, and what's bounced off goes out into the space as, as more light to do something. They, they need to pay attention to the basics. So I, I just don't know what to do anymore. Nobody's paying any attention to the things I present, and the things I present have no, nobody's challenging them because they can't challenge them, so I just sit here speaking in the woods. I guess.